This video is sponsored by Beef. It's what's for dinner on behalf of the Beef Checkoff. Thank God football is back. It also marks the beginning of tailgating season. But tailgating doesn't have to be grilling in a parking lot outside the stadium. It could be in your kitchen or a friend's backyard. It's just another good opportunity to gather people around food. And regardless of where your tailgate is, you want to be the star of it. And that's why I partnered up with Beef. It's what's for dinner on behalf of the Beef Checkoff to bring you this easy yet show-stopping ragota meatball sliders that are gonna steal the show at your tailgate. So let's just jump right into it. Now here I've got some whole peeled plum tomatoes that I ran through a food mill that got me this tomato passata or puree. You can also buy a good can of tomato passata or puree, but just go through the bottles, look at the ingredients, the labels that have the simplest ingredient list are usually the ones to go with. And especially for something like this, you kind of want it to be thick and pureed so it will coat the meatball. I also have some sliced garlic here thinly and some basil stem. We're gonna get this onto the stove and get this working before we work on the meatballs. This is just the prep stage of weekday sauce, which I've shown many, many times on the show. I'll leave a link down below. If you wanna check that out, you can do that after this video. In a wide saute pan over medium heat, add enough olive oil to coat the bottom of the pan, then immediately add the garlic and the basil stem and allow those flavors to infuse into the olive oil. If you want to add some heat, just throw a little chili flake in there. Once the garlic starts to brown, add the pureed tomato. The sauce is sufficiently thick right now, which is usually good for pasta, but I need to cook meatballs in it, so I'm going to add some water to thin it out and to compensate for the evaporation that's going to happen while I cook the meatballs, so that when the meatballs are done cooking, the sauce is properly thickened. So we're just going to let this simmer while we make the meatballs. Now to learn all about beef, beef cuts, you get all sorts of recipes, visit beefitswhatsfordinner.com. The link's gonna be down in the description. But today I'm using 80-20 ground chuck, 80% lean meat, 20% fat. Whenever we talk about a burger or meatball kind of thing going on, meatloaf, we want to talk about fat content. So you'll often see 90 to 10 lean to fat ratio, but for my taste, that just doesn't cut it. I know it's there for dietary reasons. It just doesn't bring the flavor or the moisture. So always look out for 80-20 or, or find an online butcher that are widely available today. You should be able to get some delivered straight to your door. Now, if you followed my meatball recipes, I have a particular way of making them and it evolved over time, and today I'm gonna to show you a little bit of that evolution. So what I'm doing in a big bowl, in goes my meat. I have one bowl with the meat, one bowl with the slurry. And the slurry is just a mixture of all of the ingredients that I can then combine evenly and then distribute into the meat. Lately I've been cracking the eggs though, separate from the slurry and directly into the meat so that the meat gets coated in the egg so that there's like a maximum binding power from the egg. With meatballs, for me, you have the meat and then you have everything else. And the idea is to get everything in incorporated into the meat without working it too hard. So I got a pound of meat, I'm gonna crack two eggs directly into the meat with a little bit of salt, and then I wanna gently incorporate the egg into the meat, sort of using my fingertips a little bit. You don't wanna overwork the meat at this point. So that's ready, I'm gonna set that off to the side while I make my slurry mixture. Chop some parsley. I don't want the parsley super duper fine, but I also don't want it too coarse either. So you get like uh, two to three tablespoons, two and a half tablespoons of diced parsley, half cup of some breadcrumbs, half a cup of Pecorino Romano, not Parmesan, Pecorino. You need the salt in this. Then take about a quarter cup of the tomato sauce we have cooking, some grated garlic, two to three cloves. And here's the major difference. Usually I add milk, but I'm gonna switch it out with ragotta instead. And the ragotta just slightly changes the textures of the meatballs, makes it a little bit more succulent and tender and beautiful. So I'm gonna go with a half a cup of ragotta. I'm gonna use this in a little bit. Some salt, some olive oil. Now you wanna mix that slurry up really well so that all those flavors are kind of equally distributed in this mixture. And now we can take this kind of ball or slurry and incorporate that into the ground beef. Work it gently, fold it onto itself until you can see visually that the meat and the slurry are nicely distributed. And just from smelling and looking at the mixture, I can tell it's right and nicely seasoned. We're gonna use this ice cream scoop and it measures out to about three ounces of meat and we're just trying to match the size of these slider rolls. So I'm gonna go through, measure out all the balls, then I can go through, roll them into nice little meatballs. 
And I just kind of bounce them back and forth in my hand, gently kind of compressing them without making them dense and sealing up all kind of gaps. So if you see any kind of openings or creases, you really want to work those out so that the entire ball is sealed. Like you work with dough, you, you want to use the palms of your hands to just shape the dough into a ball. I don't like to use water or anything. I like to use the tackiness of my hand to help the ball seal. I can just tell with the look, how they're holding their shape as a ball, the smell, they're gonna be perfect. Now before we fry the meatballs, I kinda wanna have a little bit of a fried basil garnish. So I'm gonna get some olive oil in, enough to fry the meatballs in. But before the meatballs go in, I'm just gonna toss some big basil leaves. And we wanna fry those until we start to see the leaves transform into like a dark, deep forest green. As you see the leaves make that transformation, you wanna get them out of the oil as they'll continue to crisp up as they dry. And they're sort of like this glossy, glassy, crispy piece of basil that's gonna be beautiful on top of the meatball sliders. Once you got the basil out, then we just wanna add the meatballs and we just wanna cook them until they're brown. They're gonna finish cooking in the sauce. We really just wanna develop color and flavor. Just know that when you're flipping the meatballs, they're really delicate. So you kinda don't wanna squeeze them too hard or break them up in any way. I kinda use this flicking method so that I don't have to like squeeze or potentially damage the meatball when I'm going to flip them. Once they're browned all over, I just gently pick them up and add them directly to the sauce. And then go ahead and finish browning the meatballs. You'll notice the tomato sauce has thickened and it can now coat the meatballs and that's exactly what you want, but it's not over reduced and it's not too thick. If it was, I would add a touch more water to it just to give it enough time for the meatballs to cook. Now we've got most of the meatballs browned. I'm just gonna get this last batch into the sauce, get those coated in the sauce and we're just going to simmer this guy for about 20 to 30 minutes until the meatballs are cooked through and nice and juicy. You don't really want to cook meatballs forever. They'll either get dry or eventually they'll start to fall apart. Now while those meatballs simmer, we can make our whipped ricotta. I'm just gonna add about two cups of the ricotta to a food processor. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and some olive oil. Then I'm just gonna whip that up until it's nice and smooth. And it really helps for the ricotta to be cold for this. Then get it into a Ziploc to make sort of like a makeshift piping bag. Keep this chilled. Right about now, the meatballs should be perfectly cooked. So we can toast up some slider rolls. We can pipe out a little bit of that whipped ricotta on the bottom and top of the slider rolls. We're gonna put a little bit of fresh basil on the bottom side of the bun. Then we're gonna pop some beautiful meatballs right atop the basil. A little bit of Pecorino Romano on top. Some of that fried basil to finish it. And then to close up the sliders, we're gonna use a little toothpick to keep it in place. The combination of the ricotta as it melts, mixing with the tomato sauce, reminds me of that like combination you get when you eat a buffalo chicken sandwich and the creamy blue cheese mixes with the buffalo sauce. It's just so delicious. The soft bun works here. A harder bun, would squish the meatball out one end. But since it's soft, it has some give and it's the right choice. It's a good tailgate thing to make because it can be made ahead and just preheated wherever it is you're tailgating. Recipe is gonna be down in the description. So is beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Go check that out. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. If you love Italian food like I do, I've got a few more recipes on screen that I think you're gonna wanna try. Like this spicy bell pepper pasta sauce that more of my subscribers have made and shared with me than almost any other recipe that I've made. So I think you're gonna like this one.